This lesson is going to focus on the essential question, how do you identify a function's boundedness? When you think of boundedness, think of boundary lines or um, side lines, boundary lines of a court or a, a field, um, things that are bound up or contained. That's what we're going to see in today's lesson. How do you, how do you identify function's boundedness? We're going to determine boundedness based on the graph of a function. Um, you can also do it based on the range, if you know the range. But let's look at four different graphs and, and compare the boundedness of each of these. First one, you can see there's a graph. And if we draw the little arrows here, it looks like the graph is going down forever. It looks like it's going up forever. This is an example of an unbounded function. In other words, it's y values can go down to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. Um, it has no minimum or maximum point on the graph, uh, and its range includes negative infinity and positive infinity. It's unbounded. Now the second example you can see if we draw the arrows at the ends of the, the graph, um, both of these go upward. There is something like a boundary line. We could draw it in here, kind of um, a line where this graph never actually pass, passes below this point, okay? And this is a, a graph or a function that is bounded below, right? The, the boundary line that we draw is actually below the graph. There's a lowest point. There is a minimum point, or there's, a, there's at least a line that we can draw um, that's below the graph entirely. Likewise, flip that graph around, and you can see in this third example, there is a line that we can draw that would be above the graph completely. Um, put, on the, put on the arrows there. So if, if number two is bounded below, where's the boundary line for number three? It's above the graph, so this is bounded above. Okay. Now this, this fourth and final graph, you can see sort of the wave motion. We're going to assume that even though the graph may continue in both directions, it's going to continue in this wave-like motion. And there will be sort of this boundary line above. There will be this boundary line down below. The graph will keep going up and down, but it'll never go up above this boundary line. It'll never go down below that boundary line. In fact, uh, this is a combination of being bounded below and being bounded above. And when that's the case, we just say that this function is bounded. Um, you can see this in number one. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the range is going to start out at negative infinity. Um, and it will end at positive infinity. Now, it may not include uh, everything here in the middle. right? We don't know what's ac actually happening in the middle, but it will definitely include negative infinity and positive infinity. A graph that's bounded below, its range will, we don't, we don't know where it starts, but if it's bounded below, it'll start somewhere not negative infinity, and it will go to positive infinity. All right, we, don't, we don't quite know what that is. If the function's bounded above, in this third example, the range will definitely begin at negative infinity. We don't know where it will end, but it will end somewhere. It won't go to positive infinity. And if the function is bounded, then that means the range can't include either of the infinities. In fact, it's, it's got to be stuck in between uh, a couple values. Uh, we don't know what those are, but it will not include positive infinity or negative infinity in the range.